morning, everyone. Sorry about that, Dave. Sometimes when I have all the time in the world, I'm late up to the pulpit. <laughs> Welcome to Marlboro Congregational Church on this heavenly, heavenly morning. I am not surprised that we are late today because um, it was a, it's a good day to get up and do something else besides come to church. <laughs> Uh, for those of you watching from home, a special welcome. Or those of you who may not be here that are going to watch a little later in the week, we are happy that you are here. And at Marlboro Congregational Church, we like to say that no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, no matter who you love or what doubts you have, that you are welcome here. And at Marlboro Congregational Church, we say that if you come as a stranger, we hope that you leave as a friend. And if this is one of the first or second or third times that you have visited with us, please take a moment to fill out the welcome card that's in the pew um, with you. It has information in there to let us get to know you better or to contact you or to answer any questions that you might have. <clears throat> Are there any announcements this morning? This morning, we will be having a special coffee hour. Last week, we put out the request for treats, and we got them. But we've also got a cake uh, to celebrate some of the events that are happening a little later in our worship service. So if no one has anything further, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. rise and join me in our responsive call to worship that is printed in your bulletins and is also on the screen. O oh, creator of the cosmos, who knows what the kingdom of God is like, but also remembers what it was like before, before creation and kingdoms, before mustard seeds and fine pearls before yeast and bakers to make bread. So you know what it is like to long for them, to imagine them into being. And it is from this longing for your kingdom and for you that we enter our worship. Yes, come let us praise and pray to the God of our promise. Let us rejoice in the good news together how nothing can separate us from the presence of God. Amen. Please remain standing and join me in singing our first hymn, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. It's number 52 in your hymnals, and the words are also on the screen.
Please join me in our unison prayer, which is also printed in your bulletins and on the screen. Holy God, remind us that we are loved when we find ourselves unlovable. Remind us that there is hope when all we see around us makes us despair. Remind us that you sent the Prince of Peace when war and violence overwhelm. Remind us that you are the merciful judge when injustice seems to prevail. Remind us that you give us all we need to do your work in the world. Remind us that you give us grace so that we may be your people. We confess our doubt and trust in your love. Amen. And now that we have prayed together, let us greet one another with the sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. a beautiful anthem from Nicole and Dave.
our scripture reading today is going to be done by Pat Duffy. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for that lovely song. It's a nice voice. Our scripture reading this morning from first one is from Matthew 13, chapters 31 through 33. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in its field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of us, all of it was leaven. Verses 44 through 52. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his glory he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On hiding one pearl of great value, he went out and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into <coughs> baskets but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They asked, yes. They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. May God add his blessing to this reading and to all of you listening. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. 
please join me in singing our next hymn, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling. You may remain seated for this hymn. It's number 441 in your hymnals, or it will appear on the screen. church this morning, Pat and I had a conversation about some of the scripture, the last few verses, which I had wanted to exclude, uh, but our teams are so efficient that I just had to run with it once it was there. I need to explain that when the disciples said to Jesus, yes, we understand, I think it was more of a yes, because it's hard to imagine why a loving God would say something like, you will be thrown in fire where there is gnashing of teeth. I think that was Matthew, because when this was written, they were trying to sustain Christianity, which was in danger of falling apart. It is not in any of the other Gospels. Oftentimes, before I do my sermon, I will record it on Saturday so I can listen to it and see if it makes any sense. <clears throat> Yesterday afternoon when I sat down and started listening to my sermon, I fell asleep on the first sentence. <laughs> so if sleep is the blessing you need today, please take it. <clears throat> a coupler is a thing that connects two things. 
there is a coupler in our organ. In the organ, the coupler connects pedals as two sounds are produced when only one is played. This is probably why it is so hard to learn how to play the organ. When we tell stories and listen to stories, something called neurocoupling occurs. This means the person telling the story is using the same part of the brain that the person listening to the story is using. The brains are coupling. Storytellers telling their stories about something that happened to them which led to something remarkable is why TED Talks are so popular. People feel connected. When neurocoupling occurs, the listener is more likely to remember what was said. We remember the story because our brains are literally on the same wavelength. When someone tells us their story, we are all ears. We are on the edge of our seats because we are sharing brainwaves. This was evidenced in our Lenten suppers. Those who shared their faith stories created a deep connection with those who were hearing. It is why 12-step recovery programs can be successful. Their main events revolve around storytelling, telling those who are similarly afflicted what happened to them, how they recovered, and what their lives are like now connects the listener in the speaker. It is so powerful that it helps them both recover from a seemingly helpless and hopeless malady. For the past three weeks, we have been listeners to Jesus' stories. We heard the story of the sower. We were taught about looking for good soil and to be very discerning about where we cast our seeds. Last week, Scotty shared with us the parable of the weeds and the wheat. Scott made us aware of some of the undesirable weeds which may be growing in our gardens. This week, Jesus has a mishmash of stories. The parable of the mustard seed, the parable of the yeast, the parable of the pearl, the parable of the hidden treasure, and the parable of good fish and bad fish. I'm not sure if Jesus knew about neuroscience, but he connected very deeply with his listeners. He connected with listeners because Jesus' stories always involved people doing the ordinary to describe the extraordinary. Today we're going to focus our attention on just one story, just one parable of the Bible, and that is the parable of the mustard seed. I would wonder if our deacons today would come up and grab these uh, little mustard seeds I have and pass them out so that everyone gets one. It's a very small bag. In fact, I think I lost mine. I'm going to grab one. This is what you'll be taking out of that very small bowl. You may need to hold it up to the light in order to see that there's actually something in there. I chose the parable of the mustard seed and giving you a mustard seed because I wanted to neurocouple with you. It seemed like a good way for us to connect with one another. I knew that putting yeast into little tiny bags would be very, very messy and almost impossible. I knew putting a pearl in every little bag would have been too costly. Although I'm sure if people in town heard we were giving out pearls, this place would be filled to the rafters. <laughs> but not so much if I was putting bad fish into bags. There are many people here who would not be happy with me if I did that. Our beloved volunteers who keep this church so pristine would have a problem with me bringing any kind of fish into the church. I know folks.
folks upstairs already got theirs before worship. I know Scott gave you ice cream last Sunday, and that provided a very strong neuro connection, I'm sure, a much different one. But today, our connection will be using different senses. I want you to look at that seed in that bag very closely. I want you to see how very small that seed is. If you're like me, you probably thought that these are mustard seeds. We see them in the grocery store. I don't know many people that buy them except the ladies I know who make pickles. But this is not the mustard seed that Jesus was talking about. The mustard seed that Jesus is talking about is the seed that you have in your hand right now. This is the little seed that grows the tree that Jesus spoke of. Jesus was talking about the seed that you are holding in your hand. Look at how puny it is. It is the smallest of the seeds. Please hold it in your hands and pray with me. Loving God, we thank you for the smallest of things, the smallest of things which become the greatest of things. Let images of this world help us to understand your kingdom and your faith in us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. I learned a lot about mustard this week. Mustard has been used since 3000 BC, almost 5,000 years before Jesus was born. Mustard plants grew all over the region where Jesus' ministry took place. In Jesus' time, mustard was used as a medicine and as a spice. According to the Journal of Medical Humanities, Mustard was used to treat anything from scorpion bites to hysteria. Evidently, if mustard powder is added to a bath, it relieves anxiety. And historically, hysteria and anxiety were used for the same condition. Jesus knew the benefits of this mighty little seed. It only took one of these to create something which would have been of great benefit to many. Jesus knew this imagery would help his followers remember his message. Jesus also reminded his listeners that the mustard tree provided shade for animals and nests for birds. Jesus included the part about the shelter of the tree so his listeners would know that the kingdom of heaven is for everyone, a diverse place where no one is left out. I imagine from that day forward, each time Jesus' followers looked at a mustard tree, they thought about the kingdom of heaven, and they thought about the promises made to them by the Son of God. Jesus' early followers were reminded that what seems insignificant will in fact reveal the true nature of God's abundant realm. Reference to the mustard seed also appears in Matthew 17. When Jesus says, all we need is faith the size of a mustard seed to move a mountain. The story tells the listener that God requires only a little faith from us. I think we forget that. Look at that tiny seed again and be reminded that God does not expect us to be crazy, thankful that that little bit is enough. This is not because God thinks we are incapable, but because God has faith in us. God knows we can produce great things with just a little bit of faith. As a parent, this parable makes me wonder if I would have struggled less if I had required less of my children. 
if God requires only this small amount of faith from me, why did I expect so much from them? And why do I still expect so much from others? God loves us so much, he is really the only one who expects nothing in return for his love. Each week in our Protestant calendar, there are five scriptures assigned to the church, scriptures that are recommended to us to follow. It's called the liturgical calendar. Every few decades, scholars from 20 or more Protestant denominations get together to couple scriptures for pastors to use in sermon crafting. I use mostly the Gospels because I like the way it flows from week to week and provides us with a chronological accounting of Jesus' life. But along with the Gospel, there is also assigned a psalm, an epistle, and an Old Testament reading. Even though we do not read all of them, these additional scriptures are often incorporated into our call to worship and our unison prayer. One of the scriptures this week is about God's love for us. For whether the message of the mustard seed is about little things becoming great things, or God only requiring a little amount of faith from us, the prevailing message is God's love. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is from Romans 8, 38 through 39, assigned scripture for July 30th, 2020. Please take this mustard seed and put it in your Bible. Put it in the place where you meet God every day. Or tape it to the mirror in your bathroom and look at it when you brush your teeth. Use it as a reminder that every little thing you do has great significance. Use it as a reminder that God requires only little from us. Use it to commit your senses to finding the extraordinary in the ordinary. Amen. Please pray with me. Loving God, we thank you for this extraordinary time that we have together, a time which may seem ordinary to some, but it is in fact extraordinary that we all gather to worship you. God, as we come into a time of prayer, we ask that you would relieve our burdens that you would hear the names of those who are heavy on our hearts so that we may be fully present in this time of worship. God, hear those names now as we call them out to you. Lord, you have heard those names, whether we have said them silently or aloud. This helps us to be reminded that we do not have to carry these burdens, that we can lay them at the foot of the cross where Jesus so willingly died to carry our burdens. God, we thank you for this glorious day. We are indeed experiencing what the gates of heaven must feel like. 
We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit wrestling through the leaves of the trees. Help us to give our gratitude to you in a world that sometimes is abused, that we are seeing all of your glory in this day. And may it draw us closer to you with every breath that we take. God, we pray for those who are not with us today, those who are sick, those who are confined to home who cannot be with us. But we pray especially for those who feel that they are not worthy of being here, those who do not feel that they are worthy of your love. May they receive a blessing that someday brings them to us so they may experience all the glory of your realm that is experienced here in this church family. God, we pray and thank you for those who keep us safe, those who keep us healthy in our communities, and those who keep us connected. We pray for those working in dangerous conditions to keep our lights on. And we are mostly thankful that we got to turn off our air conditioners and open our windows. God, we pray that you will be with us during this time of struggles that we will be reminded of what goes on in the world so that we are not oblivious to praying for others. Help us to be grateful for the peace that we experience here, peace that is unknown to so many around the world. But mostly, God, we ask that you place peace in our hearts because that is where we will make the most difference, even if it is a peace that is only the size of a mustard seed. Help us to carry the images that Jesus has provided to us as we go through our days. And when it is difficult for us to find the words, to find the faith, even as small as a mustard seed, help us to remember the prayer that was taught to us by your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. will come around with a microphone for you to speak into so that folks at home can hear. Just make sure you hold the mic up to your mouth and if you are comfortable to say who you are so people at home can hear you because they cannot necessarily see you. I'm Vicki Duck. Welcome, Ingela. It's nice to see you. <laughs> I, have a, I have a joy. Thank you, Terry. I have a joy. Um, 24 years ago tomorrow, Pat and I had our wedding marriage, not marriage, wedding commitment ceremony in South Huntsbury. So. Happy anniversary. Um, Jillian Montserrat. My joy is the care team. Um, Vivian was diagnosed with Lyme disease a few weeks ago. We've had a bunch of other struggles going on at home. And we were met with prayers and home-cooked meals and cake and cookies with coloring books and cards and flowers. It's wonderful. Thank you. Our care team is amazing. We experience the love of God through their hands, no doubt about it. All right, well, we do have some church joys today. 
And so if I, I'm going to start with um, Marge Locke. If you could come up here, please. Many of you have known Marge for a number of years, uh, like I have. She started attending our church some time ago. She sang in the choir. But what many of us did not know is that she was a member at the Manchester Congregational Church, who, by the way, was very sorry that this transfer took place because <laughs> Marge was such an active participant there for so many years. Marge is Janet Bishop's mother. She also has a daughter, Jennifer, who lives in East Hampton. And she has worked at the UCC Conference Office in Hartford, and she loves to music, she loves reading, she loves crossword puzzles, and she loves jobs like the tag sale, setting up and taking down. And I also saw this, which I thought would be a great idea. 40 years at Second Church, she sang in the choir, she played the piano, and cooked many, many pounds of corned beef for a March dinner. So let's keep that in mind for a community <laughs> meal. <laughs> so it is my pleasure to welcome Marge into our church family who started at Marlboro Congregational Church in Vermont and has come full circle to be here with us at Marlboro Congregational Church in Connecticut. So a warm welcome for Marge. I hope you'll join us in the back. We have cake, uh, part Marge is sharing it with someone else, but we have cake today. So uh, please come back and extend our warm welcome to Marge, who's felt it for many years, but now it's official. Our next event is dedicating one of our living tree leaves to Bernie Trafford. Bernie, would you come up? When Jillian spoke of the care team, Bernie is certainly one of the people that comes to mind. And I know that I'm not the only person who thinks of him when we think of the care team. This leave today was purchased and is from Ruth and Larry Jones. And this is what Ruth wrote. Ruth and Larry wish to recognize Bernie Trafford as a loyal 47-year choir member who was open to helping any member of the congregation. <coughs> Excuse me. He runs errands and gives rides for a variety of reasons without any reward except for the pure joy in being of service to others. <coughs> from his cheerful and generous nature. How blessed this church is to have Bernie Trafford. Please congratulate Bernie. <laughs> church we do not we do not pass a basket as many of you know but we do rise to give God all of our thanks for the many blessings in our lives please join me in singing our doxology <laughs>
standing and join me in our closing hymn, <clears throat> Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 558 in your worshiping hymnals. Today's benediction is from Mary Oliver. Pay attention. Be astonished. Tell about it. Amen and go in peace.